Hi, we've had lots of comments on this bracelet, so we're gonna show you how. It all began with this little peacock feather. So I wanna make this bracelet. First thing I gotta do is pick out some colors. So I went to my seed bead supply and I decided to pick out these colors. They're not exactly like the peacock feather, but it sure gives the impression of the peacock. Don't forget that brown. You need that brown as a nice contrast to all these blues and greens. So I picked out some colors and now we need to create a pattern. So I'm going to use some pre-printed pattern paper that you can get from firemountaingems.com. I need to create a graph first and each one of these little dots on this graph paper represents one seed bead. So uh, I need to make a bracelet. How wide do I want my bracelet to be? Well, I happen to know how wide this one is, but I'll show you how I came to that conclusion. What I did was I went and got myself some size 11 delicate seed beads and I just went ahead and uh, put them on a needle to figure out how wide it should be. 18, 19, 20, that's a pretty wide bracelet, but we have a pretty intricate pattern. So we need a lot of space to create that pattern. I'm gonna go with 20. So I'll count this way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So this is as wide as I want my pattern to be. That's where the pattern will be. Well, I'm looking at my bracelet and I'm looking at my peacock feather and it starts with sort of this oddly shaped circle. It's not a perfect circle, it's nature. So we don't want a perfect circle. So I'm just gonna rapidly draw a circle. Not a perfect circle, just a circle. And then I'm gonna get some colored pencils and I'm gonna make that first circle around and I'm going to do it in green, sort of like my peacock feather. And all I see is that's a bead right there. And I've got a pencil line going through it, so that's one I want to have in this green color. And there's pencil in that circle. I'm gonna make it green. But I don't have to be perfect. Now I'll take this finished pattern and I'll slip it into a sheet protector so that I can write on the surface of my pattern without destroying it. All right, we're ready to get started on this peyote stitch. Now, starting peyote stitch can be kind of challenging for some people. So I'm going to use my helper here with this starter strip. This is one that was prepared months ago. I don't even know when. So I'm gonna use this starter strip to get it going. And I'll put my needle through any up bead. You notice we have up beads and we have down beads. This is an up bead. Go through the up bead. And these are tiny beads and our, we're doing our best to show it to you. If you have trouble with these little beads, I highly recommend some sort of magnifying device if necessary. I use these little magnet clips. They go right onto my glasses. Um, but there are many, many products out there that can clip onto your glasses and give you a little more power in your vision. I'm okay on this so far, but if I get a knot, I will go to those magic clips. Okay, then I'm gonna add on my one seed bead, and this is my base, my base color. This is the rainbow blue or black, whatever you wanna call it. And I'll go through the next up bead. There we go. Pick up another rainbow bead. Go through the next up bead. and another rainbow bead, the next up bead. And we'll do that 10 times to start the first row. That's the first row. Let me double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes. And now we're going to come back the other direction. 
And again, I'm just using this peacock, uh, this rainbow color for the base of the bracelet. That's my tail. I've still got a tail sticking on it. I left about, about a six inch tail. There we go. So I have something to sew back into my pattern and close it up. Okay. Again, just think about that up bead. I take one of the rainbow beads and I go through my next up bead. That's this one right here. I'm going to go through that bead. Snug that all up. Pick up another rainbow bead. Your navy, go there. A rainbow bead and go through the up bead. So here we are. I've finished the first four rows of the base color. We're going to start getting into our pattern. Now this last row I did represents the first row on this pattern here. So I'm going to use a, a dry erase marker. Oops, I'm going to use a finer point. A dry erase marker to indicate that I have done this row. Just mark it off like that. All of these beads are in place. And now I'm going to come back this way. So I need one, two, three, four, five of the rainbow color, and then it's one green and one, two, three, four of the rainbow color. There's one. Through the next up bead. Two. Three. four, five, five of the rainbow iris color, and then it's time for one green one. Always feels good when you're starting your actual pattern. <laughs> there we go, one green. And then four more of the rainbow. And I actually like to mark it the opposite direction so that I can remember that which row I finished. There's the one green. You finished another row. That was this row right here. We did one, two, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. I just finished this very first pattern of a peacock eye. Now, as you can see, I've done a lot of work since then. And every one of those eyes is just a little bit different. You can go ahead and make every one of your eyes the same or create, be creative as you feel it. Now I've done all this work, including putting half of the clasp on and starting this Pico Edge. I'm gonna show you how to do the clasp and that Pico Edge. Clasp first. So here's the tail of my thread that I've still got out here. And remember, we have a 20 bead wide bracelet. That means there are 10 ups, right? I mean, 10 up beads and 10 down beads. Well, the clasp I'm using has five slots. Oh, so if I just sew that to every other up bead, 
I'll be in a great place. But of course, I didn't want to do it that easily. I decided I'd make five little triangles to attach them to. So to do that, I want to make a point right here. And that's where I'm going to start attaching my clasp. So I need to skittle my way up so that I am coming out of this bead in that direction. So I'm going to go down to this bead below. And it looks like magic when it's done. And I'm going to skittle my way back up. Sometimes when you're feeling very dexterous, you can actually get through two or three beads at once. There we go. And I'm up on my second attachment point. And now I can add a bead. And that will be the first point. See, I've got sort of a little point here. That is the point where one of the loops on the clasp is going to be attached to the bracelet. I want to do the same thing in this gap right here. That gap right there. So I'm going to go down a bead. Up a bead. I am going to go up a bead. Only one bead. There we go. Not make a knot. And now I can add a bead into that spot. up, add. And now I have five little triangular points and those are my attachment points for the clasp. Okay, now I'm going to, I want to come out this point up here, so I have to skittle around to get to that point. So I'm going to go down to this bead below. Then I'm going to go down one more bead below that. And then I'm going to come up just like I did on the other end up to the bead just above. I just came out of this bead. I'm going to come through this bead, but going this direction. And then I'll be coming out of this bead the way I want it to be. And now is the easy part. Just whip that whip stitch. Okay. So I've got this clasp on firmly. That's not going anywhere. And I've only got a little bit of thread left. So now's the time to complete this thread. And like I say, we don't add knots in seed beading. We do a thing called skittling. So what I do is I'll take that thread and I'll work it back into my pattern, essentially creating a knot that actually goes through all of the beads. So I'll go one way for two or three beads. Then I'll come back and go a different direction for two or three beads until I feel confident that my thread is secure. I like to use these little nippers. This fire line is so tough that an ordinary pair of scissors doesn't really work very well. So I use these wire nippers to get that off of there. Okay, so I finished off that piece of thread when I added the clasp. So now I need to skittle on a new piece of thread. Same procedure. Pick a, and ultimately I want my thread to come out of this bead right here. Right out the gold bead. Okay, so that thread is thoroughly skittled into place. 
and I can trim this tail off. And now I'll show you the Pico Edge. So these are size 15 seed beads. These are little guys. I'm going to get, grab three of them with my needle, run them all the way down to the bracelet. Then I'm going to go back through the second one, not the first one, the second one, the one in the middle of that row of three. Pull that through. Add one more bead. Remember that gold bead? This time I'm going to go through the bead next to it. Pull it all the way through. Not catching your pieces of bracelet that you've got here already. There we go. And pull it nice and tight. And there's another Pico Edge. go. We've got Pico Edge on both sides of this bracelet and I will finish that by doing a little bit of skittling to end up my to finish up my thread. Just making sort of a figure eight through all of my beads here. There you have it. A beautiful piece of wearable art. It all started with a peacock feather. <laughs>